Hello. 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 I'm Barbara Eden, and this is How to Marry a Millionaire. How to Marry a Millionaire was my first series, and it was the beginning for everything. The show is about three young and stylish working girls who find themselves living in a New York penthouse and who make an oath to help each other to try to catch millionaire husbands. Remember our oath? Oh, the oath. On my, my honor, honor, I promise to, to do my best, best to, to help one, one of us marry a millionaire. millionaire. All for one and one for all. So help us, Fort Knox. <laughs> Their pledge to themselves, of course, leads to a variety of frivolous schemes that at first seem promising, but in the end, leave them with no diamond ring. Oh, good morning, girls. Loco, you'll kill yourself. Besides, it's seven o'clock in the morning. What's the idea of waking us up? <laughs> Haven't you learned yet that you can't stay young forever? Oh, I've forgotten about that. <laughs> I'm just in training so that the next millionaire I meet won't get away. I think I was in a new world when I did How to Marry a Millionaire. That was my first, first big show. It was progress. It was one step in front of the other. I was working, and that was great. All right, honey, you ready? All right, kid, we're off and running. Take it easy. Right up, right up. Shut it off. Stay with him, honey. Stay with him. Help! 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 Nobody would ever believe that you were afraid of horses. Thanks. I was under contract to 20th Century Fox at the time. I didn't know that I had the role of Loco. I was never auditioned. I can only guess that they saw my screen test and decided I was right for the part. I had just recently gone to Fox because of being seen in a play at the Laguna Theater with James Drury, and I got good reviews in that. So I was asked to come to Fox, and they screen tested me. I didn't find out I won the role until quite a few weeks. It was odd. It was very odd. I was told by the powers that be at Fox to show up at this photo shoot with two other girls. They didn't tell me why or who or what, <laughs> but I was happy to do whatever they told me to do. I was so happy to be at Fox. The first picture we took with the car, that was the first photo shoot, actually. I had no idea why I was there. And in the middle of that photo shoot, they said, you know, when do you start shooting? And I said, I have no idea. Ask Laurie Nelson and Mary Anders, because I thought I was just sitting in for someone else. But then it was made abundantly clear to me that I had the part. And I was pleased, very pleased. I had seen the film How to Marry a Millionaire while I was still living in San Francisco. And I loved it taking over the role made famous by Marilyn Monroe. I wasn't sure about it, but I knew one thing. You can never try to be another actor. You can never do what they do in the same role. So I knew I had to do it my way, and that's what I did. At the time I met Marilyn, I'd already done a lot of film work, and I was on the stage next to hers at Fox. I was working on the movie Five Weeks in a Balloon, and my stand-in, Evie, was also Marilyn Monroe's stand-in. And she came over and said, Barbara, Barbara, you have to meet my other star. She called us the other star. I was nothing of the magnitude of Marilyn Monroe, you know, it was kind of cute. So we went over to the stage. 
I was just so thrilled to meet her. She was absolutely the most beautiful woman I'd ever met. And I say that unequivocally. She glowed. Everything you saw on the screen was what Marilyn was. She was just a, a gem. I was so happy to have met her. How did you know, you I get... never... <laughs> <laughs> you go. I was just going to say, I, I never talked to a man's secretary before. What's it like? Well, a man's secretary does the same things any other secretary would do. Well, isn't that confusing? Who sits on whose lap? <laughs> well, that situation never has come up. <laughs> What were you going to say before? Well, I was going to ask how you got the name Loco, uh, but, well... Uh... <laughs> My procedure, how I go about building a character, I used a lot of girls at the studio club where I was living and took little parts and bits of each one of them. One of my main models was my, I had a little poodle, Maggie, and I, I looked at her and she was so smart. She was such a smart little puppy, but she'd look at you with these wide eyes. She was still ingenuous. She was smart, but very ingenuous. And I thought that's what Loco is. Loco was really very intelligent, but just learning, learning about the world, learning about life. And that was Loco. Let's see. Candy, chewing gum, fruit, nuts, popcorn, glass of water, radio. Yep, I'm all set to do my homework. <laughs> Has anybody got a pencil? Loco's glasses were just frames. There was no glass in them because at that time they didn't have the non-reflection thing. And they would reflect. So most of the time there was no glass in the glasses. Put on your glasses. No, Greta, I don't want... Put them on. We don't want you winding up in Kansas City. <laughs> All right. Bye. glasses. I only wear them once in a great while for reading. How do you do? Is Miss Loco Jones in? That's me. I am Robert Crowder of Honeywell, Browning, Barnett and Crowder. You are? You better look again. Those other fellows must have stayed in the elevator. Uh, here's my card. This should explain. Is everything clear? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, perfectly clear. Loco's glasses were a good prop. I don't know if I even thought about whether they were fun or not, but it was part of the character. They were wonderful. We did it. Got ourselves a millionaire lumberman who said money didn't grow on trees. Timber! I was not acquainted with Mary and Lori before the show. I knew who they were because both Mary Anders and Lori Nelson were known actresses, and Lori had been in many feature films. They were fun. They were just the nicest. I was so lucky to be able to work with two people so, so full of energy and enjoying life. It was really fun working with them. We were called the Three Musketeers at the Fox lot. I often called Fox my finishing school because I'd done a lot of stage work. And of course, I had done guest shots in television, but not a lot. So I had to really learn the camera. It was a very good experience for me. John, dear, you know I love you. I've always loved you. And I... John, dear... <laughs> John, dear, you know I love you. I've always loved you. We must make our future together. Our love will conquer all. Where you go, I go. Come away with me, John. I'm sorry, John. Now, as the series progressed, Lori left. 
Mary Anders and I were very sad about that. Lori's departure was explained on the show by having her character, Greta, get married. Well, how was the wedding? Oh, it was a lovely wedding, Jesse. Greta made a beautiful bride. Must have been quite a day for you girls. Oh, yes. I've never been so happy in my whole life. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! That's all we have left of Greta. Just a handful of pride. <laughs> We loved Lori and liked working with her, but we couldn't, you know, you don't try to talk someone out of a decision like that. She knew her own mind. She knew her own life and what the demands were. We just hoped that someone was able to come in and replace her who was as good as she was. And they were lucky. They got Lisa Gay. Lisa was fabulous. Different from Lori, but that's good. She became a very good friend. She was a gift. She was such a lovely girl. Well, Gwen, welcome to Penthouse G. Oh, well, it's certainly a break for me, Loco. My first day in town and I wind up with two new friends and a beautiful place to live. I was just thinking, we had a millionaire in here and let him get away. Oh, well, so what? We may have lost a millionaire, but we gained a roommate. You know what? I didn't even know I was moved to first billing. <laughs> until months and months after. So it felt good once I knew, but I didn't know it when they did it. You see, I more or less had my nose to the grindstone. I was working very hard. I enjoyed what I was doing. And the things on the peripheral view didn't really come into my view. I just zeroed in on what I was doing. <laughs> No, but we're a cinch for the back of popular mechanics. <laughs> the wardrobe was made for us by a man in New York called Mr. Mort. Mr. Mort did a beautiful job with our clothing. Boy, we had a lot of dresses. It was great. We didn't really always think about the clothing or what we were wearing. It was just part of the job. It was really good when they let us take some of the dresses home. Then it was fun, you know, and I used it. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a lot of time to exercise, but we certainly did diet. All three of us were very conscious of what we ate to keep our weight down for the show. Maybe I could do the shopping and cooking this week. You prepare our meals? <laughs> That's out. Why? Because we're too young to die, that's why. We worked hard. We were in every shot, all three of us. So it was it was pretty demanding. It was it was hard work. I, for one, was very happy to do it because I had never done it before and I was climbing. I wanted to do things well. I think sometimes the other two who knew more than I did were a little upset about the heavy schedule, but I thrived on it and we enjoyed it. We didn't have time to be pranksters on the show. We were just trying to kick off our heels and do our job. Wearing high heels is quite a challenge, and we had to have high heels on in every shot. In between, we would kick them off and put on big old ugly slippers. Not only did we wear our high heels on the set, but we also wore them during the press tours while promoting the show. The first tour we did was before the show was ever on the air. We went for 10 days to New York City, and that's when we met Mr. Mort and Oh, gosh, I saw my first Broadway show, which was My Fair Lady, which was fabulous. What a first show to see. And the activities we did, that, that first tour was a lot of fun because we were in restaurants and places that I had never been in. We were also given mink coats to wear on loan, and they were very long. I'm not sure they, we even fit into them, but it was wintertime, so we needed the fur coats. Coming home from the first tour in New York City, I was at the candy stand 
And a man came over to me and said, would you like to meet Senator Kennedy? Just like that, very abruptly, very strong. And of course, I didn't have a clue as to who Senator Kennedy was. I had no idea. I said, I, I, I don't know. But yeah, like that. And so we went into this little private room and he said, I want you to meet the next president of the United States. Well, I didn't know what to say. I said, how do you do? And he said, how do you do? And that was that. But then when I got on the airplane to come home, I put my hand in the pocket and there was a telephone number, <laughs> which of course I didn't, I was so wet behind the ears. I, I just threw it away. Silly me. The second tour was, oh gosh, I don't know, a lot of cities. And that was tough. That was getting on an airplane, getting off the airplane, smiling, taking pictures, going to TV studios, being interviewed, get back on an airplane, go to the next city. It's really a road tour. Lori claimed she worked harder on the tour than she did on the series. I agree. It's tough. Very physically demanding. But it's very productive. We had a lot of things happen with animals on the show. Hey, wait a minute. If he talks, maybe we can get him to drop a few hints to Paul. That is an idea. Let's get married. Let's get married. <laughs> oh, let's be more subtle. Niagara Falls, Niagara Falls. <laughs> If I'm going to be the bride, I'll pick my own honeymoon. Bermuda, Bermuda, Bermuda. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Loco, we're trying to teach him. Well, he started at first. Let's I... forget about it. It's time to get dressed and off to work. Come on, let's go. Loco. <laughs> Working with a seal in one of the shows was very uncomfortable. Seals are the cutest, most beautiful animals with these brown, beautiful eyes and lovely coat and just look adorable. But when they go to the bathroom, they do this horrible sound, oh, you know, like this, really loud. And they do seem to have to go potty quite a lot. And that happened on the set and everyone would leave because the stench was intolerable. At the end of all this, then they put me in a tub and had the seal come in the tub with me. And I, you know, that wasn't, wasn't a lot of fun. I was just hoping the seal would contain himself while he was in the water with me. But he was cute as anything. I just don't want to take a tub bath with one again. I think they decided that it was not the thing to do. He wasn't too happy with me being in there and I was not happy at all. Whoa! It's the only way I could keep him quiet. In one of the shows was a room full of monkeys. And we rehearsed the scene. And I came in the door. And of course, you know, Loco was talking like this and just moving all over the place. And the monkeys were fine for the first rehearsal. We went back to do it again, and I walked through the door and started talking, and oh my goodness, first one little monkey jumped from his trainer's shoulder onto mine, bit my shoulder. There were little monkeys on roller skates, came over, grabbed my ankle, and tripped me. I mean, it was bang, bang, bang. There I was on the floor. It was quite an experience. So, in self-defense, I learned a few tricks of my own. What if the police aren't around? Suppose that masked bandit broke in here and tried to rob us. Oh, let's go move. Let's get the police. Loco. You just judoed Mr. Clooney, the window cleaner. I have never taken judo classes. They always had a very accomplished stunt person to show me how to do it. A Private's Affair, the film, I did in between the two seasons of How to Marry a Millionaire. But by the time I got to the movie Ride the Wild Surf in Hawaii, I think I understood the whole thing better. And I really flipped the guy. <laughs> I really did it hard. There was recognition in public because my husband at that time was a very well-known actor, Michael Anzara. So we were photographed a lot together. Michael was shooting The Broken Arrow on the next stage. He came over with his bag, which... He didn't tell me what was in it, but of course, I assumed it was candy because that's what I like. And it was an engagement ring. Just as there are new beginnings, there are also endings. And in time, 
the show ran its course. I think you're making a great mistake going to Hollywood. I mean, so many girls go there and come back disappointed. Mike's right. I had a friend, Susie Cripps, went to Hollywood. She got a part, sure, but... Well, I went to see the movie, and believe me, I saw more of the usher than I saw of Susie. <laughs> now, Greta, I have to give myself a chance. Who knows? I, I might become a big star. Well, if your mind's made up. <laughs> so, goodbye. What do you mean, goodbye? We're taking you to the airport. Oh, no, no, Mike. It, it'll only make things tougher. I want to say goodbye right here. Gee, so long. You've been swell. Greta? I... You've both been just great. Bye. What's the matter? Loco to the end. She packed my clothes. <laughs> How did I feel about the show ending? You know, you're always sad when a family breaks up and that's what you become when you work so many days and the long hours with the same people day after day after day, week after week. So there's a period of mourning, no matter what show you're doing. When I learned it was being released on DVD set, I felt great. It made me feel warm and fuzzy. I mean, how great that they would think that anything I had done so long ago was still relevant. What would I like viewers to remember from the show? Having a good time. I just hope they enjoy it and have a good time even now. How to Marry a Millionaire truly was the beginning of everything for me. And I'm very glad to have shared this look into my first television series, which will always have a special place in my heart. Now on, I'm studying more modern things. Interspace travel, orbits, three-stage rockets, life on the moon. I love these fortune cookies. Uh, that's fried shrimp. <laughs> oh. Loco, why don't you put your glasses on? How did you know I need glasses? <laughs> well, I sort of got the idea last night when you got up to dance with me and waltzed off with the waiter. Go ahead and put them on. You mean you don't mind being out with a girl who wears glasses? Well, why should I? I wear glasses myself. You do? <laughs> you do? <laughs> That's what you look like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Keep the grip firm. <laughs> But not too tense! <laughs> Cha-cha-cha, one, two, 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 cha-cha-cha
What am I going to wear? How about my new silk suit? Oh, Lover, you're wonderful. Well, you know the pact. All for one and one for all, so help us sport knock. <laughs> <laughs> you need a big one.